Hi everybody, this is Patrick Altmeyer, and I'm going to show you my first look at Linux Mint 14. As you can see, it's very similar to Linux Mint 13, in the, except for this circle right here, where it says 14 instead of 13. This is the Cinnamon edition, and it is very clean, very quick. I installed my printer on this, and this time it detected it with Linux Mint 13. I'd have used a local host colon 631 in the um, in the URL bar for the uh, web browser. Like this is how I installed it the old way. In Linux Mint 13, I had to do this. I want to load. I had to use this interface, but with Linux Mint 14, I went ahead and installed it the old-fashioned way. Configure printers. It's a network printer I installed. You can see it right here, and even it installed the fax also. But I was able to do it right here through uh, the inboard printer uh, program. So now it's caught up to Ubuntu in that aspect, and that it's just as sharp. Anyway, enough of that. Let's just go around and show you some of the features of Linux Mint 14. Again, you're familiar with this, uh, you know, usual um, interface. Uh, one problem you might have is this time it did not already have the wireless drivers installed or any default drivers. So I had to, uh, when I installed the, uh, the software, make sure you have it connected to the internet through the USB port. That is very important. I'm in the Ethernet jack. Sorry about that. And um, what you want to do is go to Control Center because you ha you might have to uh, find out what kind of um, wireless card you have. Anyway, you can see here you have all your other applications, appearance, file manager, network, Bluetooth, everything. And even a new handy thing now in version 14 is system information. And to find your wireless card, go to PCI Devices and scroll all the way to the bottom where it says Network. See how it says Network Controller? Mine was the BCM4322. So since I had my um, computer hooked up to the Internet as I installed Linux Mint, it automatically put some default drivers in, into the Synaptic Manager. Uh, so go to pack Package Manager under the Start menu. Type in your password you use when you uh, install Linux. And all you got to do is type in part of the words. Because uh, mine was the BCM4322. BCM. And look at that. The BCM wireless kernel. Yours might have uh, different letters, but it'll say WL-kernel-source. You want That's the best driver so far. It, it installed all the features, everything you can imagine. Your USB devices, it'll show printers, you see I, I install mine, how the battery's doing. Well, I do have a battery. I guess it's not getting it this time. The computer, the display, it even knows what kind of a, what kind I have. Okay, let's close this out and I want to show you power management. This is another new feature. Remember how everybody will know how to put it in sleep mode? Well, here it is. It's right here now. On, on battery power, you can have it say, never sleep, suspend, hibernate, put display to sleep when acting active for 10 minutes. On AC power, I have it set up to never go to sleep. When laptop is closed to suspend and to put the display in sleep in 30 minutes. You can even have it uh, dim the display when idle. General settings, only display an icon when a battery is present. Only display an icon when charging or discharging, blah, 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 blah. I like to do it when a battery is present, as it's shown right down here. And you can see I'm starting to lose power. It says I have 80% left. Anyway, that's about it. I mean, it has everything you can even imagine. When you want to set up your sound, you open this up. Since I'm using my headphone right now, I had it set to clear chat and I had the input set to uh, clear chat comfort headset analog mono. This one here for the hardware, I have that, I have this, and my output, I have the built-in analog stereo or my clear comfort 
audio stereo. This will uh, make the sound come out through my headphones. And uh, as far as the appearance goes, you can see here I have the standard background. Now in order to change that, all you got to do is open up the control center again, go to appearance, or you can get appearance from uh, that previous menu here. I'll show you the other previous menu here. Preferences, right under preferences, you can go to appearance also. It's, it's come with the default Mint X. You can add others, you can download them, and then it comes with these different backgrounds. Like I'll, I'll hit this one, and now you can see the backgrounds change in here on the side. Comes with a lot of nice ones, several different Linux Mint versions. 14, these are pretty much similar. You have Nadia, and you have 14 again. Scroll on down, here's all the ones you may have. I like this one here, it's the stars in the background, looks cool. It's that easy to change the background and give it a more sophisticated look. And it doesn't even feel like you're in Linux anymore, it has a Windows feel actually to it. Let me go back to my stars, I like that one. Look at how simple that is. Now look at how nice this looks. It's sharp, it's quick, it's clean. Here's my microphone. The sound settings. Here's a wireless. When you click on it, you can see, I, um, since I'm not connected, an Ethernet jack is not connected, I cannot choose this. But here's all the routers I can hook up to. And it comes default again. As far as the mail program, you get Firefox web browser, Thunderbird Mail, you get transmission for your BitTorrent downloads, it uses the XChat IRC which is its version of Windows Messenger. I'll show you how this works real quick. It's looking for the host name. Okay actually this XChat is other people online if you have any questions about Linux. I'm sorry I don't know what I was talking about. But anyway I can always ask a question like you see a conversation is going on right now let me open this up so you can get more of a picture of it all these people in green are online right now these people are listening but not active in the chat okay I'm gonna close out here if you have any questions on Linux on how to do something just come in here there's always tons of people online and uh, let's try uh, messenger I'll type in messenger and see if anything's been installed Oops. Pigged in Internet Messenger, it's the same thing. This is the one I was telling you about. It's the same thing as. This is the exact same thing as um, Windows Messenger, but you get the different choices. I'm going to go in with MSN. This is like Windows Live right here. Put in my Hotmail account address. Then I'm going to put in my password. I'm going to have it remember the password. And that's about it. Add. And now I'm online. It's, I'm available and it's connecting right now. When it's done, it'll be just like Windows Messenger. I'm going to add another one. What the hell? Let me add my uh, Google. Google Talk. I'm going to use my Gmail account, the one that I'm using with Patrick Altmeyer. This is me and my, my wife. Uh, what is my domain? I'm going to give it my a new... Um, oh, my new uh, cell phone website domain. It's uh, sellyourphonesuperstore.com Password. And that's about it. I'm going to have it remember the password and hit add. Now I can go to either one I want. Let me, and I'm going to enable this one. I guess my password wasn't right. Let me modify this and see what happens. This says gmail.com. Let's go back. Oh, okay, I get it. I thought I could put in my own website. You can't. And uh, let's try it again now and see what happens. Nope.
Oh yes, and now it's working. Let's see. There it is. So now, if somebody's on my Hotmail account or my Google, I mean not mine, but I mean if somebody's using Windows Live Messenger or Google Chat, they can now contact me right here. Very simple. I can even add a Yahoo. I don't have AOL, but I can even put my Facebook in here. Why not? I might as well just keep going. Let me add my Facebook. I got to use my uh, Facebook e email address and then my long Facebook password. And I'm going to remember this password too, so I, any of these three can, you know, contact me. Unable to validate the certificate for login on Facebook.com cannot be validated. The certificate change presented is invalid. Well, I don't know why, because this is my account. Nope, I'll have to get to it later. So let's see how quick it is on the internet. As you can see, it always opens up to the Linux Mint homepage. You're using standard uh, Firefox, which is an excellent browser. You can add Google Chrome if you like. The Chromium, I guess, because we're in Linux, but it's not a big deal. And let's just see how fast it is. I'll go to ESPN.com. There we go. And as you can see, it pops right up, nice and clean, nice and clear. And let's go to my uh, my cell phone website just to see how fast it can display a store. SellYourPhoneSuperstore.com. This is my website. I sell cell phones at excellent prices if you're in need of one. Nothing major, just showing you that you can get around the internet just fine. Okay, I'll close this out. I don't want to do any uh, more uh, self-bragging, but look at how beautiful this is. What a program. It is excellent. You will enjoy it. It works like a charm. I'm Patrick Altmeyer, and um, you can reach me at helpmepatrick.com, and um, I will have more tutorials on how to uh, use Linux, how to use WordPress. Those are my two favorite programs. They're free. There's really not a need to pay for anything anymore. Anyway, my name is Patrick Altmeyer. I'm going to show you how to create a virtual box so you can install Windows at a, in a, another video. So please subscribe. Oh, one other thing. It does come with GIMP. As you can see here, it comes with the new GIMP editor already installed, and it's the 2.8 version. One thing I want to show you is when you first open it, before you do anything, he'll go to Windows and, and make sure that this single window mode is checked. See how it's nice? It's just as good as any other image program out there, including Adobe Photoshop. It is really, really good. Patrick Altmeyer, goodbye.